All right, welcome in, folks. Thank you very much for your patience. We're a few minutes late getting into this one, but we are indeed now ready for the action here on Ancient Harvey. Starting off on the T side and not messing around. They ain't wasting any time. They've been waiting long enough. They want to go straight into this. It's a fairly decent read, though, with the utility. You can see Movistar Koi uh, ultimately not playing anyone on A to begin with, so we should have a pretty easy bomb plant here for the Finns and an ability. Okay, I was going to say an opportunity to get away into a decent post plan, but they've just lost two players through the smoke. <laughs> Not much you can do about that one. No, Sadodo tapped one with the P2000, and I think just got one from around Donut too. So Banjo, Uli, and Irax are in a, a tough position now. Banjo trying to play that little close angle, but of course there is a smoke and there is a kit on Sadodo. If they can get that kit onto the bomb now, there'll be two players remaining. It's going to be very difficult, but Banjo is fighting well. He gets three and he almost finds Sadodo in the smoke. Banjo could get all five and almost does. Nice try, but not to be, sadly. Oh my goodness. That's so unlucky. That is so unlucky. You know, but that's that's how it goes. You get the smoke, you get the kit, and then it's just a, a case of body blocking, especially when they had as strong an advantage as they did. They all just overwhelmed that one player, sacrificing themselves for the greater good. Yeah. And it does indeed work out. But with a bomb plant and a fair amount of kills, um, I think that it does make sense to go in for the buy here. Interesting to see Banjo go on to the MAC-10. After four kills, got $1,100 remaining. Um, so not even a Galil. Definitely could have gone for an AK. Either way, round has started off poorly anyway. as really that first one to fall. Yeah, Sadodo just jiggling very long there. Wait for information. Doesn't get caught off. And as soon as he does, he chucks that incendiary to the floor. Banjo with a super, super nice try. In that pistol, as you say, four kills can often be a big success. Mopoz, though, is definitely denying the plot in this round. Oh, he's done really well to get three. I thought he just the, the two would be more than enough, but he even bursts down Irax as well. Well played from Mopoz there, playing around those sight smokes, denying anything for Havu. And now they want to Nico themselves. Yeah, not much that they can. Uh invest into this one, particularly, as you mentioned, with that bomb plant denial. I just think that Banjo hasn't bought up again. Like, he's saving up for the orc early on. I guess that was their thought process long term, right? With that amount of money he built up on the, uh, on the pistol. Yeah, I mean, I suppose so. Um, I don't know how much sense it makes, to be fair. You know, I, I would kind of go all in the power of the force buy. You never really know. It wasn't all that close. You know, it's not like... A Galil or an AK could have made too much of a difference. Um, but at least in the initial thought process there. And, you know, AWP on the T side of Ancient. Not super popular, but maybe they've got an idea for it to just get their early uh, gun round going. So we'll see. We shall see. Safe to say, Movistar Koi are the significant favourites in this game, purely due to recent form. It might seem weird saying that if you don't have a, a look at those sort of recent matches and recent events. You see the rankings and you think to yourself, okay, well, they're very even and have a actually slightly higher rank than Movistar Koi. But you know, if uh, you dig a bit deeper, there's only really one event for Havu that has contributed to that ranking. Of course, Moby Star Koi have the recent form, having qualified for the first CS2 Major. Now they have a bonus buy, technically, here, Moby Star Koi, in this round. They can stick with the 3 and 9 from the Gunnel, taken over from one of those previous rounds. The Dodo just about gets away from Otto's Orb. And how good Otto can be from his past, of course, on some bigger organisations in CS. But at the moment, Banjo is the only one to get a kill in these opening three rounds, so they need to change that. They do indeed. And hopefully this is the time to do it. Minute and 20 left on the clock. Looks to be a relatively clean setup here uh, for an A execute. Just winding the clock down ultimately and hoping yeah, some utility comes their way. You can see a main smoke unprompted for Mobby Star Koi. And with a minute left, they are very low on the utility here on that CT side. So, 
Gonna have to put up a good defense. Retake will be very difficult. Yeah, it's very low now. Late round Molly until the bottom of mid there is surprising. And Otto actually quite lucky to get away with his life there. Adam tries to burst him down with the Galil, but of course Adam's only got 23 HP from earlier on. But Mopos in mid once again makes that MP9 sing. Okay, it's one for one, and that's more than enough in this situation. And now Havu will try and make their way in toward A. Another lovely shot from Banjo, but there is Adam. And one is kind of more than enough, and he doesn't just get one. He gets two on low HP, and it puts it down to this two versus two. Banjo, this is the safest place to plant at this point, And they'll try and win their first round in this A site after plant. Going to give it a good go here. Davi G on the flank, deleted. And that just leaves Adam low HP and looking to beat the AWP. He goes straight into the crosshair, gets a bullet off, but it needed to be in the noggin. So there you are. Harvu will indeed convert that two versus two and find themselves a T-side round. It wasn't the best of the best, but I think they're happy to get it early on. And as you can see off in the top right there, their map pick. So kind of need to prove to themselves that they are here to play. Timeout being taken. I appreciate teams going for timeouts so early in a game. Sometimes you can feel like it's not necessary. I've been waiting to get the game underway, of course, and we'll have discussed a lot. But, you yeah, know, they're happy to chuck it in after their first round victory as well. Davi G could have turned the round on its head there with that A long flank. But Banjo, his great start to this game is very much felt. Really important kill. Of course, Movistar Koi do have some cash to fall back on. And Sedodo will still have his AWP available, of course. Bottom of mid control. Nades will come in. But I think we're going for some sort of fast mid play there. It most certainly have been cancelled. It's uh, very common these days to play patiently and wait on that. You know what's coming. With that utility. It's almost a bit like Inferno, that portion of the map. Always constant utility in every gun round. Moving a bit faster towards A this time. Ooh, trying to keep them guessing, I suppose, on that CT side of things. Actually not fully committing a round just yet. Might be a little double pump here. But yeah, Harvu... Love just grouping up, playing the pack mentality. It'd be great for Movistar Koi to, to see them pulling off a little bit of uh, deep aggression because they might just get away with a huge flank. I mean, they had a little bit of that last round, but if they can get it nice and early, gather the info nice and early, they could definitely change their setup effectively. Stodo peering through the red room smoke. This is something that Irax won't be expecting. And that's some nice, aggressive ideas from Stododo. Adam will deal with Uli. There goes Puha. Just will take him. And this is looking very, very clean. Mopos just has to shoot a couple of bullets to deal with the low HP of Banjo. That's an immediate rebuttal for the Spanish-speaking roster. Yeah, very cleanly done. Um, I guess just believing in the setup a little bit more. And again, things are not quite as sneaky as maybe Harvu think. They are much more telegraphed um, than they believe at this point. So definitely something that needs working on quickly. And again, they've just conceded a round after just winning one, right? So an immediate reset. What do they do? They go straight towards B. You know, as A has maybe stopped working in the short term. So... Again, moving a little bit predictable for my money, Trav. Yeah, that is kind of the feeling at the moment. Um, these pistols often can be such a, a problem. <laughs> Davy G will get taken down by that Molotov for Motto. But again, that's all they can take. And I'll be happy with four players alive on that. No progress for Havu on that one either. Well, the Galils can come out. For Uli. So you can buy up the extra util. 
Let's see Banjo go for one too, but no, he'll commit to the AK. Only needs a few bits and pieces. And of course, reminder that number 11 and 12 on the map is not uh, the correct numbers, as it were, due to the fact, of course, thanks to some little bit of bits of magic, we can have our coach slots involved with the SL qualifiers and ECL these days. So that's why 11 and 12 show up on the map, because the coaches are in the server, of course, helping out. As they should. But this round is great for Mobby Star Koi. Two opening picks straight away. Stolo and Adam take one apiece. And now Havu look to try and do something with Pewha. Pewha. Yep, charging in here. And Will managed to find the spray down. All right, just a little bit of a headless chicken about it. And it does uh, kind of work for him. Oh, so I'm going to go down in towards the middle, unfortunately. So... How much can be done about that? Oh, no pause. Was he spotted there? I don't think so, you know. He might be able to get away with this one. Adam is just baiting them in slowly. <laughs> and there it is. Nice and easy for Marpoz in the end. Six to one. Obviously, oh, Starkoi hitting their groove and looking very, very dominant indeed. Harvu half by for them. But yeah, really struggling now on the maximum loss bonus. Yeah, Mopar's just being an absolute nuisance there. He knew he didn't have to swing. Lots of other players maybe would have in that instance to maybe take the initiative first, but with Davy G taking contact, Mopar's knew he had freebies in a matter of moments. Let's see where all these fast Tech 9 plays work out. Often, it is something that breaks the losing streak, and there you go, an opening for Banjo. Okay. Something to work with, at the very least. Just is alone here. Probably going to need multiple, or at the very least, to stay alive for a while. And he goes a bit wide there, doesn't he, in fairness. His teammate smoked off a tag from Stododo, but to finish off with the P250. Banjo falls, getting aggressive. Two versus two on the retake then. Bomb going to go down. Oh, a quick up shot round the corner from Stododo. is very nice indeed. And that seals the deal. Airax, he had to make a move. And unfortunately, he moves straight into the path of the AK. Seven to one. Harvey with a bit of something, but they need to start putting some rounds on the board here. Yeah, that was progress, at least. Better than we've seen in previous. Tech Nine's getting himself three kills and a plant, but yeah, Sedodo hitting that quick shot in toward Donut, just as he was sort of trying to back away around the corner as well. Important one to hit to relax the situation, and Mopoz is having a great start, of course, as well. Longest tenured player on this team, or at least combination of teams now, of course, with Mobby Star merging with Koi and the Mad Lions group, if I'm not mistaken, from my research. Lopoz is looking for more. Spent nearly seven years on this team with these group of players. One of the stalwarts, of course, is old mate Alex, not with him anymore, so he is the most well known from this group. Irax has some timing here, perhaps, and Banjo's already got the opening. Irax has heard the rotation away from Just, and Just has no idea that Irax has walked through here. Oh, it all depends, doesn't it? Just has got plenty of time to have an inkling. Is that a step as well, potentially? It doesn't make a difference in the end. Irax finds the kill, and he's not going to go much deeper than this. But Mopoz, oh, he's still here. They did not anticipate that. Two for him, looking for a third, and the bomb! Not going to be able to get it. Otto with a big, big, big frag for the context of this round. Still not over just yet, but yeah, so many angles to clear out here. Banjo, good timing. Oh, left on 3 HP there. But all the same, he should have done enough. Oh, Dabby G. Turning around, going to get spammed a little bit. They'll be able to lock him in now and just, you know, contain his position ultimately. Gag him for this fight. Try and save the orb if he can. Straight into the crosshair and eliminated. That was a bit of a funky looking kill, but all the same. Uh, a second round for Harvu. Yeah, and beautiful stuff from Banjo as well. I mean, uh, obviously, Stadetto did the right thing by wandering forward with the P250 out rather than the orb, but he only hit one bullet on Banjo and Banjo reacted well. 12 kills on the board for Banjo. And let's just do some quick caster maths. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 2 is 7, plus 1 is 8. He's got 4 more kills than the rest of his team combined. Well, hot diggity damn. <laughs> there, ain't no, there ain't no flies on this guy, let me tell you. Yeah, indeed though, man. That's, uh, he's, he's 
He is looking good. Um, and, and sometimes you see players, right, get off to a hot start and can't really capitalize on it. You know, they start maybe playing a bit too confident and uh, the early rounds really impact the way that they approach the game. But Mr. Banjo, he understands what he must do, putting the team in his backpack a little bit here. Yeah, it's difficult. It is difficult. 12 kills, though. Second highest fragger on the server. Just needs a little bit of help. A little bit of help. Even if we take away that uh, 4k in the pistol that didn't really result in very much, right? So if we're minusing zero impact rounds, um, it's still eight kills, which puts him at the top of his own yep. scoreboard. And still second in the game, actually. So, um, yeah. yeah, he just needs a bit of support, I think, from... Maybe Otto on the AWP, something along those lines. Not going to happen in this round from Airax at the very least. Man advantage for Mobby Star Koi. Yeah, Airax has struggled as well. Two and nine. Puher, one and nine. Banjo, of course, has plenty of experience still, even for a youngster. He's only 19 still, but we kind of feel like he's almost a veteran at this point because we know him from that Fnatic Rising Academy team for two years. He was on that roster. And of course, I believe stood in for the main team on one one event too, one or two events, if I'm not mistaken, back in the day. But I say back in the day, like he's old and I'm old, and yeah, he's eight years older than me, so or younger than me, sorry. So yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. I just feel like it's a name we've known for a very long time. Another opening pick though for just like you say. Now Mopoz needs to do some work in Jaguar. And guess what? He's doing it again. They just cannot trade Mopoz. How many multi-kills has he got so far in this one? He's 16 and 3 and Otto might not expect him close to. Massive shadow advantage there for Mopoz. It's another triple and his KD is getting ever better. Oh, that That's a bit cheeky. That attempt is certainly a bit cheeky. But nonetheless, he was uh, looking for a big round. In a big banjo with some nice kills. I mean, not going to happen for him here on only 34 HP, making a lot of noise as well. So should Ooh, I was going to say be just to take him, but at the very least, they they know where he's at. They know where he can be. Oh no! After time, and just uh... is going to find it. It's a, a laboured kill, but an important one nonetheless. Harvu, Eww, from bad to worse, maybe not the uh, worst situation. They still do have a fair bit of cash in the back pocket. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that it does is put Banjo on a Galil, I think, instead. So it could be a lot worse, but yeah. Unfortunate. And Movistar Koi just showing their dominance right now, and Mopoz is having himself a day. I don't... Man, you know, if I were a pro pro player right i don't understand why this is such a thing like i do it sometimes in in my like matchmaking games where i'll be like okay i'm yeah. one and ten right now and this guy's got 14 kills let me let me just hand him an ak i don't mind you know i i want to win i don't i don't care if i'm not getting kills i just want to win i just yeah you know. it blows my mind sometimes nonetheless he's going to find a kill on the galil anyway because that's what he can do three versus three out here towards <laughs> middle and mopoz goes in a bit too deep Man advantage for that there T side, and it's looking better and better. Here comes Banjo with a multi-frag round. Bruh. Bruh. Banjo. Battling up against Mopoz, trying to get best in server. And the crazy thing is, Banjo just keeps adding more to his tally, and his teammates aren't really doing that themselves. It's kind of insane. It is a one-man army right now for Havu. But it's going to win them their third round. So Dodo's going to have to save. And yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you. Like, especially in professional Counter-Strike, you'd think you'd do anything to win. Um, you'd get the best guns to every every player at every given opportunity who are maybe playing yeah. play better than you, feeling better than you on the day. But in this case, for Banjo, whatever he has, it works out for him. So whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's right. it's that player ego as well, I suppose. It depends. You know, if you look at, like, someone like Nico, for example, if he were in this situation, you know for a fact that he would be like, yo, and I'm not going to point any, I'm not going to say any names, but there, there probably would be a name on the G2 team. Um, you know, he, <laughs> <laughs> he'd just say, give me, give me an AK. 
right? He'd be vocal about it. He'd be like, give me an AK, I'm playing really well. Somebody give me an AK, I don't have money for it, right? And it's obviously what Jame does. Like, his entire thing is built around that. Um, and again, they do it with an AWP. They drop an AWP, wouldn't they? If, like, someone had money yeah. for an AWP and he couldn't afford it. They'd drop him an AWP. Um, but, yeah, I think it comes down to a bit of a vocal thing. Like, in that round, if Banjo had said, can I get an AK? I don't have enough and I'm playing really well. I don't think anyone's going to stand up to him. But no, still a bit no. weird that it doesn't happen, you know? But at the same time, he got loads of kills, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's funny, isn't it? It's like the classic thing of those famous instances where Zeus had the AK and Simple yeah, had the yeah, Deagle, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. From uh, the old days, but... There was Which made that, absolutely saying, no sense, you know what I mean? It's when... funny, isn't it? Because they would argue that with... What would they say? They would say, okay, well, Zeus is the worst player, so he needs a better gun to even it out. Yeah, but yeah. But it's like... Yeah. Does it really work like that? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> that's us going on a bit of a tangent for a second. Banjo is having a superb game and deserves to be praised. He needs some help. Arax trying to do that. He spots Mopoz in Jaguar. That respect might be at a weird time. He's only got that MP9. He's going to have to back away. Only just manages it. But there is Otto. He finds one with a sniper. Removes Adam. Dabby G goes in for the trade. And he's looking for more. But Puha answers back. That's only his second kill of the game so far. Remember, that first one he took was basically just a solo push up, to, up through B. So that's probably his most impactful kill yet. Or moment yet. Indeed. We'll see what they can do with it. I think an 8-4 is a pretty soft blow. It's still not nice, but definitely workable. Much better than the 9-3 that they were looking at at the start of this round. Herax creeping forwards or contacting through Stododo. Edge of the smoke! <gasps> Oof. He's had a little bit of a, a ping there. A little bit of a moment. Something inside him told him to just get off the angle and look down. That sense of timing from Stododo is absolutely immaculate. So a three versus three now coming in. Looks to be a B play here. Not much that Mobby Star Koi can do to stop this bomb going down. But at the very least, they've got a couple bodies ready to go. That's a nice one of though. That spreads, of course, on default. So they're going to have to delay it. Now 10 seconds. Is Mopos just charges his way through? Well, at least he tries it. Fair play. But Puha and Uli are holding for support. Banjo didn't need to get the kills this time. He just needed the bomb plant, and he was helped by his mates. Nice triple swing as well, or at least a double swing. He was getting flanked anyway there, I believe, to Dodo. And they will take four on the half, Havu. It's not the end of the world. We'll see if they can stay in touch after a quick break.
Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. Eight to four at the turn of the half. As Trav said, we'll see whether Harvu can use the four rounds to the best of their ability. CT side, pick up the pistol, get some momentum going, their own map pick, and I think a pretty solid CT team as well. Their T sides for me have always been a little uh, lacklustre, especially in terms of the firepower from time to time. A lot of noise being made here from Movistar Koi as they will uh, fake it out towards B. And now charging via mid. The smoke will just about make it in. But they'd already crossed. So a little bit of a weird situation here. Honestly, this is a kind of cool around the world play here for Movistar Koi. Straight up through lane. Past Jaguar. Completely ignore that position. Go straight up through mid. Through red room. Round to the A-bomb site. And I don't think Havu really knew what was coming there. Retake 3v4. There's no kit in play at the moment, which makes this ever more difficult. Fight comes from Mr. Dodo. Happy to step into the open. Otto will take that one, but in comes Mopoz. And Adam took Otto in the meantime. Two quick taps from Mopoz. Comfortable stuff from Mobby Star Koi. Yeah, I mean, obviously in the first half, I was talking about how, you know, Havu need, need some players on the team to help Banjo out a little bit. But. You know, the, 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 it's not the, the worst thing to have one player playing really, really well. It's not like the other four players are, are useless, right? I mean, some people might interpret that as what I'm saying, but obviously not. I mean, they're the players looking for you know, utility, holding angles, they're communicating. There's a lot of impact that can be done by a player that maybe is having a poor game. So, it's definitely not all Banjo, but in this instance, it's going to be all of them in mid. And they'll be eaten up on the pistols. Yeah, makes sense, yep. Easily done for Mobby Sarkoy in uh, prime position then to find this map. And this was a map yesterday against Forsley. Really did struggle on, so that kind of just paints the picture of, I think, the split of ability between these two teams at the moment. Vertigo is a real solid one for them as well. So we did say that Harvu would need to open up strong. And hopefully for them, they can put some rounds on the board. That's ultimately what they're looking for here, just to pick up some speed. Speaking of, fast down middle. Puya will open up. Mo pause. however. Oh, from shelf for the double spray down. Thank you very much on the transfer. Hits his 24th kill of the game. And he shows no signs of slowing down here. Charging up through mid. He has been heard, so they are ready for him. Down he will go, but he gathers a lot of information there for the T side. Mopoz is actually just on a tear. It's funny how lopsided the scoreboards actually are on both teams at this point. Mopoz is now 24 and 7, and no one is higher than 10 kills on Movistar Koi. Mopoz has done so much of that multi fragging. Just, that's a lovely shot on Otto, man. Important one as well in that 3v3. Good response from Uli, at least, to take down the Lurk of Stododo. And that's actually... I say the Lurk of Stododo, I am lying mm. to you, because that's the bomb outside B. Has Uli seen it? I'm not sure. Just, of course, is coming through from A, but that's being covered by Airax. This is now interesting. Yeah, definitely a weird split, I think. Oh, Airax, no way! He's going to find the kill anyway! Oh, I thought he'd been timed out. But no, not the case. Adam, to clear all the angles, certainly not the easiest in the world here. Azuli was in that off angle. Very well played to hold the bomb. And you know, it's funny, because I think Mopoz, big 2k, but he just kind of needed to freeze up. You know, he's feeling very confident there with the run-in, and I think that the rest of the team didn't really know how to react to what he was doing, and the remaining three players were just so widespread um, that they get picked apart one by one. Indeed. That was probably one of the first small errors we've seen so far from Mobby Starkoi. Mopoz did his job from shelf and then decided to charge in for more to try and end the round there and then. But they slowed down a bit too much and it didn't work out. But once again, speed is the answer of Mobby Starkoi. And they do get, I say, a man advantage. It's still going back and forth. Eventually, Mopoz finds another kill. And Puha has left in a clutch. He can find the AK at least. And he will be on a relatively quick flank here. Mopoz goes down, which he won't. <laughs> Why do I expect anything else? 26 and 7. My ideas are now void on that clutch attempt for Puha. And they're eking toward this first map finish line. 
Yeah, a little cleaner, a little more structured there from Moby Sarkoy, and again, just kind of showing him who's boss. 10, 10, 10, 11, 26. <laughs> it is somewhat comical to look at, but... Uh, 5, 5, 6, 7, 17. I know, it's basically it's the unusual. same. It's actually same it's unusual. Story. I'm not it, like, it is, saying it anything. Is. It's just an unusual scoreboard. Yeah. On both. Yes, yeah, so I've seen it sometimes with like one team, but indeed for both teams to just be so top heavy. Mid stack once again here from the CT side. Banjo adding to his. Uh... Oh, adding two. <laughs> okay. Stenodo's definitely had a mare there, but nonetheless, 12th round coming in. Seven now in a row for Harvu is a lot to ask of them. So disappointed Mopos didn't get all the ecos there so he could get a. Uh, what is a rare these days, 30 in regulation, especially in such a short game. We've had a couple of matches, of course, in CS2 history, the short CS2 history. Yeah, there have been some ridiculous 30 bombs. This would have been in the list for sure if he could have got some of those ecos, but not this time. He's done enough multi-fragging anyway, and he's looking to do even more. Gives himself another one. Just the one on this occasion. Otto with his orb posted. Bobby Star Koi have this significant lead. And they're just happy to take straight up duels against the orb. Even though they've got smokes and stuff. I mean, you know what? Why not? Now they'll get the utility out. Create that space for the bomb plant. A uh, difficult plant to work with, to be fair. But work with it, they shall. Kit available here for Puya. Actually, quite a lot of utility remaining for the Harvu side of things if Arax can get it in. Oh, wide swing from Uli. Unable to find it. Stadodo, though. Molotov out of action, at least for now. They have a brief window to try and isolate some fights here. Really not a lot of time. Great little flash comes around, and Arax just overwhelmed. 13 2 5 in favor of Mobby Star Koi. Incredibly clinical stuff from them there on Ancient. Um, as said, not the best map in the world for them, but just able on an individual level, as you saw, to outclass their opponents. Yeah, I mean, that's what both of us probably thought beforehand as well, what we both put um, forward as our thoughts. And